Good morning, good day, or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are currently located. And welcome to this lesson learned series with a special focus on solar powered irrigation system, or as we also call them SBIS. This session is part of a lessons learned series organized by the Global Initiative Water and Energy for Food to discuss the lessons learned from the previous programs securing water for food and powering agriculture. Our speakers today come from different countries around the world, which is maybe an advantage of these online events. They come from Germany, Kenya, Ivory Coast and Dubai. My name is Kilian Blumenthal. I am junior advisor in the program Water and Energy for Food in the East Africa Regional Innovation Hub in Kenya, and I will moderate this session today. I would like to start with some ground rules. So this session is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Water Energy for Food website and also to the YouTube channel. On the right hand side, you should see a Q&A box you can submit questions and comments throughout the session there, and we will answer them in the Q&A parts. You also have the option to submit your questions anonymously. The session will be in English. There's a simultaneous transcription available, but you should note that this live, caption, uh, live closed caption uses only basic software, and this is only intended to serve as a guide if needed. And you can on these, you can turn on these captions um, in the language control of or in, in the video controls. Next slide, please. Coming to the content of today's session. So we'll hear some opening remarks and introduction to the work of powering agriculture and water and energy for food in the field of SPIS. Then we will reflect the role of SBIS for food security and get to know how actually powering agriculture started the work on SBIS. Then we will present the main results of a recently published SBIS stock taking report. Talk about the lessons learned from toolbox trainings. Talk about support from water energy for food for SBIS capacity development measures and see a presentation about the newly developed toolbox application that will come out soon. Last but not least, we have two more activities or two more points, which is the overview of an e-learning on SBIS. And we will have a look on a trailer for tutorial videos, which are produced for a Shamba shape up. Now I would like to introduce the first speaker, my colleague Lucy Plushke, who is managing the East Africa Hub here in Kenya and who will give us a little introduction. Lucy, over to you. Thank you, thank you. And we can even move on to the first slide. Um, so thank you all for joining us. And let me just say a few words about solar powered irrigation. We are now the we for food project, but this work already stems from the predecessor, which was powering agriculture. Um, and it's a little bit of a reunion today. We have some colleagues that used to be part of this work around solar power irrigation that are here. They are now moved on to other projects. Um, and it's quite nice to, to all come together in a way to uh, present the work that's been going on for, well, five, six years now. Um, it all started, it's one of those examples where it really started with sort of a, a first idea, let's create some tools, some knowledge products um, around solar powered irrigation, um, which started with GFA at that time as a consulting firm. And then it quickly became clear that some of these tools need to be simplified, adjusted, um, applied, used. Um, and it started to grow into what is now the solar powered irrigation toolbox with its various tools and manuals and has expanded from there into online trainings and video tutorials and so forth. And I just want to give you a quick overview and then we have a few more speakers here today that are going to give you a bit of a deep dive into some of these uh, well, products and, 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 and sort of capacity development measures that we have in place. So the next slide, please. 
yeah, that's the first idea. So when we talk about the SPIS toolbox, we're really looking at a comprehensive uh, comprehensive toolbox where we start off with really getting informed, sensitizing people to and promoting um, sort of the use of solar powered irrigation. The idea really is as simple as put um, uh, that we are using renewable energy, reducing costs, reducing the environmental impact uh, compared to sort of conventional pumps that are being used for irrigation, but not just that. We're looking at smarter irrigation systems, better water management, and um, also increasingly multiple uses of, of sort of the solar systems that we have um, that, that are being used at the moment. Um, you find the link here, but we'll hear more about it. At the moment, we have 16 tools and 10 modules um, that are basically going from getting informed, looking at the economics, the viability of any investment that a farmer could make um, into financial so financing options for farmers into the design and setup, as well as I mentioned sort of the irrigation aspects um, and use aspects of solar powered irrigation systems. Um, and that toolbox is available in English, French, Spanish, and soon to be Arabic. So really universally applicable uh, and ever expanding. So it's really a lively tool. I've mentioned before it started with Excel, with Excels, and now is, um, you know, we can always add tools. We can always think of more topics that we haven't covered. Um, and it's a growing, lively uh, well, instrument, knowledge instrument. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the ways it's growing is the app. I don't want to say too many things because that will come up soon. But really what we've learned is um, when you go into the field, you cannot really carry your laptop and fill in Excel sheets. Uh, what you need is something that is easily usable um, and can also be used, well, can be easily used. You put in data, it's user friendly and also you cannot mess up the different Excel sheets. So that's why we kind of looked into the app. And from there, next slide, please. From there, we also realized that uh, other kinds of resources in order to make the toolbox and, its, and their various tools more applicable to people's lives. Um, uh, we then invested in, in, in video tutorials, in posters, in country case studies. Uh, Kerstin and, and Robert, you can tell us much more about this. We also have a newsletter that that sort of um, reports on projects, on, um, um, on, on events, everything related to solar powered irrigation. So now we have really a bit more of a, um, well, we have a diverse set of sort of supporting tools in which we can apply this toolbox and then we move on. Thank you. Um, but at the end of the day, the key element of making sure that our toolbox is being used are these trainings. Um, the focus of most of these trainings is really that the toolbox is for, so, for advisors, for those that can guide farmers um, on, on, on sort of investment decisions, those that are uh, for decision makers and policy makers that think about subsidies or about what to do with um, at their county level uh, with the boreholes they have. Um, so that's the that was the first focus of the advisory trainings. Um, and then we soon realized there's quite a bit of demand for these advisory trainings. And usually they're like a week long. Sometimes they're a bit shorter, sometimes a bit longer. Um, we go in the field, we try experiments, as you can see here with the water bottles. Um, the idea is that they're very interactive, but that we use the tools. Um, and so you need to have some good understanding of the toolbox and it, not everyone can do it. And that's how we then ended up with the training of trainers. So to build really a training community um, so that we get support from experts in the field that familiarize themselves with the toolbox to help us do trainings around SPIS. Next slide. 
And from that, this is Kerstin's baby, really, uh, the SPS Trainer Network developed, um, where it is a, it's an online platform on, on Energypedia, where also the toolbox is hosted. And there we have upcoming events and trainings. We have a list of trainers here under consultancy database, um, as well as sort of training kits, games and curricular, uh, curricular descriptions um, that can be used in practical training. Next slide. And then from that, um, the e-learning course developed with the Ostfalia University of Applied Sciences. We'll hear a bit more about this later as well. Um, and this was really to take some of these key lessons learned from our sort of training experience and from what we know that uh, that are crucial uh, to translate them into a online course that that uh, that was being rolled out um, last year 2019 I'd like to say next slide And this is something that we're currently doing. As I mentioned before, the toolbox so far is mostly focused at advisor level, which means the complexity is such that probably you need to have some sort of background um, in irrigation, in agricultural water management, with energy, um, with engineering, uh, to make sense of all these tools that we have. And what we realize now is that we should also focus on the farmers who are using the the pumps or even pastoralists um, and we started to work with Shamba Shape Up uh, which is a TV program in Kenya um, that do sort of makeovers for farms so they visit farms with uh, talk to the farmers talk about what problems they have so I would like to irrigate but I don't know how so then we have a TV segment on well, this is what you have to do. This is who you could ask, and this is what you should consider um, if you want to install a solar-powered pump in your on your farm. And so these tutorial videos are currently being produced in English, Swahili, and French, and they'll also be part of a um, TV show which is broadcasted in um, in Kenya uh, on national TV. And later on, it will be available on Energypedia and YouTube as well. Next slide. There's also various reports and studies around SPIS. Um, there's a few listed here. So you can see some are more co um, country specific, um, like the one in Morocco, or um, others are a little bit more value chain focused as to how, where in the value chain solar power irrigation can be applied. And the most recent one is the SPIS stock taking report that Hannah will be, um, Kerstin will be presenting soon. Next slide. One other thing that we were trying to do is um, not just talk about theory, but have practical pilot sites in very different climate and agroecological zones, different land sizes, different irrigation systems, different crops being grown, um, and really sort of study the impact in the long term. So now we've ha we have set up pilot sites mostly in uh, Kenya, but we're also trying to expand it to other countries in East Africa and possibly West Africa. Um, and really look at what is the impact, well, first of all, the performance, and then also the impact on productivity, on incomes, um, on also climate resilience. Next slide. And also part of this work is um, what we're now doing with uh, to develop suitability maps. So this is really based on an index of biophysical indicators, socioeconomic indicators, and then that forms an overall sustainability index, which is supposed to be an online map, online, interactive, with various uh, layers um, of data that essentially at the end tell us, okay, here it makes sense, that's a red zone, that's a green zone, uh, to use SPIS. And again, it's not just the biophysical um, aspects, but socioeconomic aspects, which is anything from 
sort of infrastructure, access to roads and markets, also to access to services to the suppliers that are providing them. Um, and it's quite nuanced. Um, it says February 2020, I meant February 2021, is hopefully when these maps are coming out for. Here you see Kenya and Cote d'Ivoire, but the idea is to have a regional map for West and East Africa. And then next slide. We're at the end. So this was really just a brief overview of sort of some of the main resources we have for capacity development. Some of the, 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 the key um, yeah, tools and I'm going to hand over to Robert, who is really the brain behind all of this, who started. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yes, so I let Kilian take over from now. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy, for this nice overview of all the SPS activities. Um, first, a little reminder, whenever there are questions, you can put them in the Q&A box on the right hand side. And now I would like to invite Robert Schultz. He is program leader of the GIZ Afghanistan Energy Sector Improvement Program and currently working from Dubai. The reason why he's speaking today for us is because he was also in the Powering Agriculture team some years ago and he was one of the first one to work with the SPS system and was one of the first ones to, to push all the activities that we can find today. So Robert, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kilian. I think my, my camera switched off when you said some years ago, thinking, whoa, time flies when you're having fun. Um, yes, dear colleagues, thank you very, very much. My name is Robert Schulz. Um, I was part of the Powering Agriculture team from 2016 to 2019 and privileged enough to be able to contribute towards the SPIS uh, toolbox development. Um, next slide. <clears throat> so just uh, the obligatory overview slide in terms of what is the toolbox. Uh, the toolbox on solar powered irrigation systems is designed to enable advisors uh, to determine the technical requirements for system sizing, understand risks related to irrigation, assess the financial viability, review installation quality, conduct routine maintenance, and ensure the sustainable use of water resources. It's a digital platform. And when it comes to advisors, we considered um, agricultural extension offices. We considered solar companies, uh, which more often than not regard themselves mostly as sellers, but we believe that they have an advisory function as well. So there is a whole um, bundle of people within the sphere of solar power pumping of irrigation and agriculture that we hope to address in, in the development of the toolbox. <clears throat> so I would like to give you a quick history of, uh, of what has transpired and how we got to where we are today. Um, next slide. <clears throat> so it's a story. And every good story starts with once upon a time, there was a team of consultants. And in our particular case, we had a team of specialist consultants that were recruited in 2015 up until 2017. So over two years, this team conducted field assessments, measurements. They went on numerous field sites, they did inspections. They liaised with um, agricultural offices in, in various countries and they acquired a, um, an extensive set of information which they compiled <clears throat> into a 150 page document called the Handbook on SBIS. Along with that, they also provided nine tools, I believe it was back then, most of them word-based questionnaire type, uh, survey questionnaire type uh, um, tools. So when this was delivered uh, at the very nearing the end of, of this contract, uh, the Powering Agriculture colleagues asked themselves the vital question, who are we doing this for and who will use it? And uh, 
how can we make it a little bit more user friendly? I know many people absolutely enjoy reading riveting 150 pages on technical information, but not all of us are like that. So how do we actually turn this into a product that um, reaches a, a target audience? So the very last thing we asked our team of consultants to do was to cut up the whole report. You can imagine their, their joy. Um, they needed to take this finished document, format it all neatly into uh, an MS publisher and cut it up, cut it up in separate modules. And not only that, turn all the MS Word tools into MS Excel. Um, because we believe that Excel would be a, a simpler basis for doing uh, analyses. <clears throat> so this was um, their last. This was uh, yeah their last f formal act, and what was left was uh, were a, a whole bunch of loose modules and a whole bunch of unformatted Excel files. And it's at this point in time uh, that this became a in-house effort. This is where the, the colleagues with, uh, within the GIZ, but also with other important ent entities such as the uh, FAO, volunteered their time and spent their time developing the tool from the inside out. So not outsourcing it, but doing it ourselves. So we embarked on this journey of mutual learning. We had, there were a whole number of us um, regularly within the team and none of us were any specialists in the field of solar pumping or irrigation, but everybody brought a certain amount of knowledge into this pool. Next slide. So the first thing that was decided was let's make this purely digital, not a hard copy paper based a handbook, but let's turn it into a digital product that be, can be updated and um, and refined as we go along. Um, that was the first easy decision. Of course, the consequences were not so clear, so we so we entered the rabbit hole, so to speak, um, because going digital means you needed to, we needed to reformat all the modules. First thing was to actually do text compression. Um, it is a potentially painful and arduous task to take 150 pages and and shrink it, shrink the modules into um, into the the pure essence of it. <clears throat> any surplus, superfluous words, any duplications needed to be removed. We then needed to do a unified appear, uh, uh, identify and implement a unified appearance. Once again, you've Many of you have done this and there's a way of words jumping around and sentences jumping onto pages and you're simply not able to get them to fit where they are supposed to. And then we set intra module links so that when you are in one particular module, there's a ref and there's a reference to another module. You can use hyperlinks to jump back and forth. Um, once again, sounds very easy, but very tricky. Lots of blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> So when, while we were refining the seven modules, we realized that, were, that there were some key, uh, there was key information not considered. And three additional modules were compiled from scratch. This was done with, uh, to a large extent with the significant support from colleagues within the FAO that have been working in this space and alerted us to specifically irrigation and environmental issues um, that were not considered uh, in depth. And as we worked on the modules and we looked at the tools, we also realized that the modules actually lacked certain tools. There's much more scope to create additional tools to assist us in things such as determining how often to irrigate a certain crop or tools that would allow us to uh, assess what kind of investment por uh, um, portfolios apply to solar pumping. A whole range of additional tools were, were thus developed, um, primarily Excel based because we believed it is it has, it allows us to interact with the data and immediately get a response from the software. 
so then once the, all this work, work, work was done, it was decided to place this all onto the Energypedia wiki. Once again, easier said than done because now it required additional reformatting of the modules. They needed to be condensed even further. They needed to be cut up even further into smaller portions so that it makes navigation easier. <clears throat> Once again, links needed to be set a huge task. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this was an in-house activity and we needed to learn as we went along. And the pictures to, the, to your right-hand side illustrate uh, the links that we went through. I mean, the top picture shows Kerstin learning how to configure a pump controller. So we engaged with companies to understand the technology much better. The picture in the middle shows Kerstin and, and McBen in, a, uh, in, in Kenya speaking with a rural supplier of solar pumping technologies. We spoke with agricultural advisors. We spoke with um, uh, smallholder farmers to really understand the, the length and breadth of this technology and the impact it would have positively and negatively. <clears throat> the bottom picture shows Kerstin in action again, presenting our didactic concept to GIZ colleagues. Once again, testing our thoughts against a sounding board of people that we had at our disposal that volunteered their time, that had expressed their interest. Next slide. So how was the toolbox refined thereafter? Um, well, we developed a complete didactic concept and a complete didactic approach. We conducted trial trainings. We developed a training plan. We identified supplementary materials, an example of which is the picture at the bottom showing cattle density across the world. Um, this is all supplementary uh, visual material that we went hunting for. Anything that is related to agriculture, to irrigation, um, to financing, all this information that is out there and scattered, but extremely valuable. So we hunted for a lot of supplementary materials that could strengthen a teaching, uh, a teaching concept and a teaching environment. We developed the country case cards that Lucy had mentioned earlier as a trainer tool. This is the approach essentially to create a, a fictitious story of a pretty much very highly likely scenario in a country and populate that with actual data and allow persons, trainees, advisors, a journey of discovery as they complete the case card to understand step by step how the different tools are applied and how the results from one tool relate to an input input data for the next tool and one gets an, a comprehensive overall picture and make and can make a decision based uh, um, provide decision based uh, um, or, or fact based decision making. Uh, we collected pictures once again. Um, delving into the network that we have at, had at our disposal, con contacting companies um, abroad, uh, back home, and reviewed a lot of pictures that gave an idea of what components actually looked like in the field and what were good and bad practices that could be observed, once again to act as a guide to advisors. Then we did the translations. Once again, large part of the translation was actually done on module basis by volunteers. So volunteers within the GIZ and others uh, offered their time to translate a module or two or three. And if they were good at it, we pressurized them in doing five more. <laughs> but essentially, once again, a collaborative effort. We developed information posters um, just to further condense the information and portray it visually, all in an effort to take the fear of this topic away from persons, to make it appear less daunting. Um, then a detailed <clears throat> e-learning course was initiated by the Osvalda University of Applied Sciences which for us was a great vote of confidence that, that this university saw value in it 
and decided to turn this into a complete e-learning course, sub complete with uh, uh, numerous video tutorials um, and, 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 and training programs. Great. Slowly but surely coming to an end. Next slide. I mentioned the poster. I, I had to share this with you because um, it once again just illustrates how we try to reach all quarters uh, with the knowledge that we were that we were um, collecting. So this poster in A0 format gives a, a rough overview, highly condensed and highly um, specific on all the features of the toolbox. It took a lot of time and as of as we were compiling this, I kept thinking of uh, a quotation by Mark Twain, something to the effect, uh, I apologize for this long letter. I did not have time to write a shorter one. And the essence is the shorter and more condensed and more explicit one wants to do things, the more time it requires. So there's uh, a lot of effort behind that. Next slide. So nearing conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, um, I once again wish to uh, emphasize the, this collaborative in-house effort, uh, this, this road of mutual learning and um, really understanding a technology and through this process of understanding, being able to pass this knowledge on to others. There were a whole range of absolutely lovely people experts in various fields from from pumping to irrigation to to agriculture that were involved in the whole process guiding us step by step persons that we could test uh, our ideas on and that gave us invaluable feedback so this was a long long journey a long road um and and there was uh, in the at, it was at times daunting um and overwhelming but there was one thing that was like a, a, a red thread throughout the entire initiative. We had a lot of fun. Next slide, please. We, we simply enjoyed it. Um, it was an absolutely creative process of mutual learning. And um, I had to share this picture of Kilian at one of the trainings showing us, you know, how he jumps, jump starts his brain. <laughs> Kilian started as an intern and has contributed significantly to the to the toolbox and is contributing even more now. So, yeah, um, thank you very much to, to everybody. Thank you for your attention and um, keep it pumping. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. But I'm actually not sure if it was really me on the picture we've seen before. <laughs> <laughs> I have proof, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much for these uh, for these um, almost history classes of the development of the SPS toolbox so far. And as the next speakers, we will have Kerstin Lohr and Hannah Sander, who will talk about the SPS stock taking report. Kerstin works in the GIZ project Sustainability and Standards in Global Agriculture Value Chains in Ecuador, but as far as I know, she's still in Germany. And Hannah Zander works also for the Water Energy for Food Regional Innovation Hub in Côte d'Ivoire, and she's already there. So now Kerstin and Hannah, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Kilian, for this introduction. So yeah, good good afternoon and good day also from my side. Um, as Kilian already introdu introduced me, I am Hannah Zander working um, in Abidjan, Ivory Coast for the Water and Energy for Food program. And um, to give Kerstin the possibility to also present herself quickly before we start, I hand over to her for the presentation. So good afternoon, good morning to everybody who's listening to this uh, very nice session today. My name is Kirsten Lohr. Um, thanks for the very nice introduction, Kilian. Um, yeah, I'm currently working, or I, I switched, let's say, from water, energy, food uh, topics, then to something even more concrete to bananas in Latin America. So this is what I'm currently occupied with and dedicated uh, to, but still my heart is half, 
half-hearted to to SPIS and all what's around the solar power and irrigation. So this is why I'm here still <laughs> and very happy to share some of the some infos on a very nice publication with you that is and who is listening today. Perfect, thank you. So yes, we are presenting today to you the SPIS stock taking report. So um, Kirsten and me, we both worked for powering agriculture before and we we managed the yeah the creation of this uh, report and um, accompanied the process until publishing. Um, the report was published in August 2020, so August of this year, and um, we can directly start with the next slide, please. OK, so I first would like to share with you what is the report all about. So this is mainly um, the chapters that you also will that you will also find in the report. So um, the SPI stock taking report is a technical handbook that can be used by um, by those who have questions about the SPS system. So it's all around the technology uh, financing systems and um, also the environmental aspects. So to be more specific, um, it gives you first an overview of the different irrigation technologies. So surface irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, drip irrigation, and it also talks about the efficiency and durability of the different irrigation systems. Then uh, we have a chapter on the financial analysis of the different irrigation systems, uh, irrigation solutions and the financial viability. Um, of uh, SPS systems, so it's mainly about um, the financial impact of SPS systems um, on farm budget. So this is of course always individual, but it gives you already some advice and some some instruments also at hand to to do these analysis. Then we have one chapter about the components and the design of SPS systems. So um, here we talk um, about water pumps, storage tanks, solar generators, and what you need to take into account when, when you're planning and sizing an SPS system. Um, for um, at the fourth chapter, we have um, um, the management requirements of SPS systems. So um, what are uh, the requirements that you need to take into account and what um, what aspects are influencing your strategical and operational farm management when you have a um, SPS system? So beside these technical aspects, um, the report is also presenting um, the environmental aspects and the durability. So it talks about um, the carbon footprint of photovoltaic systems, for example, um, and it gives advice on how to reduce the risk of water, uh, groundwater depletion and soil salinization and um, how you can manage um, the availability or yeah, the availability of SPS components on local markets, which as we all know is, is not always easy to handle, but um, yeah, it needs to be taken in account, into account when planning and establishing an SPS plant. Next slide, please. Okay, beside, um, beside uh, these technical chapters and the environmental chapters, what is specific about this report is that it gives you um, for every chapter a tool out of the SPS toolbox at the hand. So every chapter starts with, um, give, with providing a QR code and a hyperlink to one specific um, Q, to one specific um, SPS instrument that is relevant for this chapter and you can click on it and then you can directly access the different Excel tools and uh, soon you could also use it on on your app um, on your phone. Um, yeah, so um, it also gives you some concrete examples of different um, different countries. So, for example, um, we have four different case studies within the report. Um, in Chile, we, we have an example of flower production under drip irrigation, for example. In India, we talk about drip irrigation for vegetable production and um, a sprinkler system for wheat and mustard irrigation. In Kenya, we, um, we look at aquaponics um, that are supplied with um, solar pump groundwater. And in Morocco, we talk about um, drip irrigation on a vineyard. 
So this is quite uh, interesting to see how in different countries solar powered irrigation systems are used and adapted to the different contexts. And then um, to, to um, come to an end of, these, uh, of this um, overview of the study, the report also provides a chapter on potentials and barriers of SPIS systems. So we all know there are a lot of potentials such as um, replacement of diesel generators, bridging of um, grid power failures or jo um, local job creation. But it's, it all also has a realistic um, view on the barriers that are still existing. So um, it highlights the, um, the high initial investment costs, the lack of market oriented financing and the lack of quality assurance and services, for example. But not only listing these barriers, it also gives you an idea of how you can approach these barriers and how you can overcome them. Um, for example, taking the barrier of the high initial investment costs, um, it highlights um, the fact that despite these invest high initial investment costs which exist and which remain a problem, that, um, that frequently is, is, it is overlooked that after the installation of SPIS systems, only a fraction of the operating cost of a diesel pump is incurred. So it gives you these, um, these details at hand, it gives you tools at hand, and um, it really contains all aspects of SPI systems and can be used as a handbook to look up um, details. And yeah, this is mainly about the report and to uh, give you a broader view on the target group it is meant for, I hand over to Kerstin. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. So for whom is this thought for? Who should have a look in this in this report? Well, actually, we tried a bit a, to to re, to to do the um, to <laughs> have a report who is nearly for everybody, so the the possible and the impossible. Um, as it's thought as a compendium, as a handbook, it's meant really for a very broad group of, of people. Um, there is uh, um, content that is particularly uh, um, written or uh, particularly given for advisors on SPS and practitioners, pe people who are already experimented, who have already lived in a certain expertise in solar power irrigation. And for them, it might be very interesting to see what is the current status of certain, uh, of certain, in certain topics with certain regards, um, but also have some interesting links to, for example, um, practical tools that are out there. Uh, and uh, that might be interesting in comparison to those they are already using that are more um, that are more for pump sizing, for example, because um, one of the big advantages with it or the big um, plus of this report is that it takes into account not only the technical aspects of solar power irrigation and pump technology, but uh, further aspects that Hannah mentioned. But it also serves very well as an introductory read uh, for SPI's newbies, as I put it here. So a very good um, um, report on uh, for all those who are interested but have haven't have do don't have a clue on on solar power irrigation systems for now. And uh, this is, I think, a very good first step um, uh, to to get closer to the topic. And then for uh, the the target group of academics uh, or of people who are more um, scientifically orientated researchers, there is definitely it's a good compendium also of current studies and current literature and research on the topic. So as I said, pretty large target group, um, but bits and pieces for everybody who is interested and engaged and want to be more involved in the field of solar power irrigation. Next slide, please. So how can you access? You can't easily just scan this uh, code and I, I bet this presentation is later then also shared with the uh, youth um, participants. But uh, once again, I want to uh, hint you to the Energypedia 
dot info page and the the path to access the report is given here what is that page about uh, that's not only about solar power irrigation obviously energypedia dot info is a let's say a portal on broadest uh, broadest uh, infos on renewable energies and their application in various sectors and this is where we also find a portal on we for food what an energy for food and there in the publications you find uh, the stock taking report or handbook on solar power education published by GIZ. This from my side so far. I don't know whether there are any questions on the report or if we go then further on the next topic, which is Kilian then. Thank you. Thank you, Kerstin. And also thank you, Hala. Yes, whenever there are questions also regarding the report, you can always put them in the question box right on your screen. Our next speaker is Hilda Nabwile from Wise Africa. She and her colleagues from WISE participated once in the training of the trainers and learned how to become a toolbox trainer. And afterwards, they did a number of advisory trainings by themselves using the SPS toolbox and also using it for their own work. So she is the perfect one to tell us about the lessons learned working and training the toolbox from different perspectives. So now, Hilda, I would kindly ask you to take over. Um, all right. Thank you, Kilian. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending. My name is Hilda Simiu Nabuile. Um, I am an electrical engineer based in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm also a member of Women in Sustainable Energy and Entrepreneurship. Cooperative Society Limited, and uh, our focus mainly is on capacity building in the energy sector and trainings for for all. We can move to the next slide. Um, I've already done the first introduction. We are an energy service cooperative, and our target is to enhance participation of women in renewable energy and entrepreneurship. We do this in two ways, in capacity, capacity building, one, and then secondly, in energy, in solar installations. And uh, we are composed of women who are in the technical fields, mostly engineers and um, environmental scientists, and uh, some people in the biogas sector. And we work together, we dedicate part of our time because it's not a full-time employment, it's our part-time venture as women. We dedicate some of, our, some of our time to install solar systems for some partners and some of it to train on solar systems. So we were trained by GIZ, that was Kirsten and Mark Ben um, in 2018 as TOTs. And uh, so far we have done quite a bit of work with GIZ in trainings on SPIS. So I'm just going to go through some of the, some of the things that we have done together with GIZ as WISE. Um, that's the first photo from our pilot training where we attended our training of trainers at Strathmore University in Nairobi. We had six WISE members, um, two trainers from GIZ, they're actually there, <laughs> Kasten and Mark Ben. It was a very interesting session. And since then we've done so many things and we are grateful for that. Then we can move to our next slide. So this is just a, a brief overlook of the module of the toolbox, which was discussed, I think, in depth by Robert. Um, same thing there, but in this case, I have some different uh, tools that have put a yellow mark on them. Um, due to COVID and its effects on face-to-face -face trainings, we were engaged by GIZ and Magraph publishers in a training on how to handle online trainings on the SPIS toolbox. 
And these trainings were focused on the five tools that are actually that have the yellow dot on top. That's the water requirement tool, farm analysis tool, payback, the pump sizing tool, and the soil tool. Currently, we are doing our first online training on SPIS. We'll have the last session on Thursday this week. Uh, and we are doing this in collaboration with Magraph Publishers. And it's been a very interesting session getting to understand how to make sure that the online training is as effective as the face-to-face -face training. Then we can move to the last next slide. Um, this is a simple overview of what the Excel tools look like. The first part, the first worksheet is the README. It's always an introduction, gives you some information of the objective of the tool, what it is able to do for you. The ones, the next three that are in red are two, are two, are worksheets that require some inputs from you. Um, your input will, and in training, it will come from the country case cards that have just been mentioned. But when you're actually applying the SPIS, you'll get this information from, say, your, the farmer you're working with, the client you're working with, depending. Then the fourth worksheet, which is in green, is usually the results worksheet. And it gives you the information that the tool is able to give you depending on your inputs. Then um, the last tools, the ones that are in yellow, are usually more of information tools. And you can always look into them just to see what is the background information used by the tool to give you the results that you get. Um, so all tools have this setup and each worksheet has its own function. And they're pretty easy to navigate and also easy to train teams on. We handle a lot of questions from trainees, especially when you have a lively team, which is the fun part in training. We move to the next slide, please. All right, so this is um, just a number of trainings we have done in collaboration with, in collaboration with GIZ since 2018. Um, we have some trainings that we have done in Ghana, we have some that we've done in Uganda, some we've done in Malawi, and some that we've actually done in Kenya, our home ground. So far, I can say we have trained almost 150 um, people on the SPIS toolbox. Some are advisors, some are people who work in the water, ener water energy sector, some are county government officials or representatives from, um, from FAO, from GIZ, from Energy for Impact, a variety of people. So we've done these trainings so far. Um, I don't want to read them word by word because you were able to see them. But the most interesting one was the, the one for the SPIS TOT webinar delivery training, which we did over the last two months. And we had two wise trainers participate and we are trained by Magra publishers on how to actually handle on online trainings for the SPIS toolbox. And I, I had just talked about that a few minutes ago. Then we can move, move on. Um, also uh, in our partnerships with GIZ, we did a contribution to an article in the Rural 21 magazine and gave some input as wise. There's a link there in case you would like to just read it. Um, next slide. Um, the next two or three slides are just photos of us doing some work. So we have two photos there for Ghana and Malawi. There's one where they visited a pineapple farm. I think we had one of our representatives here and it looks like she had so much fun. Next slide. Then this is a photo from our training in Uganda. We also had one wise trainer there. That was in July 2019. And this one was for agricultural production from selected districts, ministries, and government agencies. All right. Next slide, please. This one is for our SPIS training in Nairobi. Um, last year, the first photo is our chairperson conducting a training there on main system components. And then the second photo is a farmer, the farmer that uh, 
was visited during that SPIS training. Normally, when we have the face-to-face -face trainings, we always incorporate the farm visit so that trainees actually familiarize themselves with SPIS um, practically. The next slide, please. Um, so uh, we have learned very many different things over the last uh, two, three years as we have worked on SPIS with FAO and GIZ. The first one is that um, the toolbox trainings ensured that SPIS information tricked down to the end users and not and was not um, within the domain of say pump manufacturers or solar modules manufacturers, but even the farmers and the people that work closely with the farm, these farmers are now informed on what SPIS is and what it can actually deliver for them. Um, secondly, the toolbox is easy to use once you get familiarized with it. There are, there's always lots of questions coming up during the trainings, um, but once you're familiar with how to use the tools, it becomes so much easier to use and it can be used by all stakeholders in SPI in the in the SPIS industry. Um, we also enjoyed the experience of using flexible teaching methods and teaching in different environments where we had to visit Ghana, we had to visit Uganda and Malawi. Unfortunately, uh, Corona has messed the training schedule for this year, but it has been quite interesting also training participants in virtual, virtual rooms because we even get to train more trainees from different areas of the globe. Um, the fourth reason is that the trainees found the trainings to be very help, helpful and have been keen to incorporate them in their day-to-day -day operations. This is um, best applied for people who are actually in the agricultural irrigation and energy space. We have had good reports of people who have applied the SPIS in their projects. Then um, trainings and trainees themselves suggested modifications to the toolbox to suit their local needs based upon their experiences. And it's very interesting that trainees are actually able to relate what is in the toolbox and what they are actually come across in the farms. Um, then lastly, uh, virtual trainings on SPIS is possible and effective. We were initially worried. I was part of the team that took part in the, on, in the online training, online SPIS TOT. And initially I was really worried we were actually two of us from WISE. We were both very worried about how effective the virtual, virtual training can be compared to face-to-face -face trainings. But over the last months, we've been trained on how to deliver this toolbox trainings. And it's a good report. It's actually possible to do these trainings virtually. And the advantage is that it's, you're able to train much more people, more people than OK, not more people per se, but let's say people in many different parts of the globe at the same time. Yes, um, so virtual trainings is possible and, uh, and effective. Um, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions on WISE and our experience, I think we will, I will respond to them in the chat if they come up. Thank you very much. Kilian, back to you. Thank you very much, Hilda, for your presentation and sharing with us all the experience that you made during the trainings. And, and now our next session directs to those who are maybe interesting, interested in also doing these trainings or offering these trainings or participating in these trainings. And we have now Johannes Montau from our Bonn GIZ Water Energy for Food team. And he will tell us a bit about the ways that Water Energy for Food can support capacity developing, uh, capacity building measures. Johannes, to you. Yeah, hello everyone. And thank you, Kilian, for the nice introduction. Uh, my name is Johannes Muntau, and I'm working, as Kilian mentioned, in the steering unit for the Water Energy Food program in Bonn. And I will talk a little bit about global capacity development uh, with, within the project. But bef 
before I will talk about that, I will give you a little bit an insight about the program itself. So next slide, please. We for Food is a joint international initiative of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Ministry of uh, the Netherlands, Foreign Ministry of the Netherlands, uh, the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, and the US Agency for International Development. And this initiative will be joined uh, by European Union soon. And um, We for Food continues and builds on the lesson learned from the two grand challenges for development, which ended last year, securing water for food and powering agriculture. And We for Food seeks to accelerate the scaling up of climate friendly energy and or water efficient innovations in the water energy food nexus. Next slide, please. So we try to do that uh, with the six areas of intervention via direct grants, technical assistance, financial assistance, advocacy, knowledge generation and facilitation, and capacity development. If you are interested in the other five fields and you want to learn more about it, uh, we invite you to visit our website or contact us via mail and uh, the mail address and the website link will be posted in the chat in the Q&A box. Next slide, please. So the sixth area of intervention is the global capacity development, and we have basically one big target group. These are multipliers from the water energy food sector or the agro sector and value chain organizations. This can be co uh, cooperatives, technical institutions, uh, governmental organization or non-governmental organizations. And within global capacity development uh, of We for Food, we try to contribute to a better understanding of the water energy food nexus approach and its advantages as well as the challenges and opportunities that hinder or promote the scaling up of clean water and energy solutions in the agriculture sector and in the agri-food industry, and also give a better understanding which investment measures and business opportunities are within the sector. Next slide, please. Thank you. And uh, so we have identified so far different fields of activities where we uh, want to develop together with multipliers and other non-governmental organizations or institutions um, development measures uh, such a, and these fields are small scale irrigation or solar powered solutions like uh, trying cooling heating along the value chain or also developing capacity measures within the, the context of access to finance. And we welcome you and all organizations uh, to, to contact us and to collaborate with us and to provide or to develop training materials and give trainings on these different fields of uh, activities and uh, areas within the water energy uh, food nexus. And um, next slide, please. And yes, yeah, so we we do our our activities are not just regional, as Kilian mentioned before. We have uh, four regional hubs within the international initiative. These are in the West African region, in the East African region, in the MENA region, and the Southeast Asia region. And so, if you are sitting in one of these areas, you're most welcome to contact us and to work with us together and collaborate on diverse global capacity development measures. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Johannes, for your insights. Now we have heard so much about the SBIS solar powered irrigation system toolbox and 
you already mentioned or we already heard from other speakers that we are currently developing an SBIS app that corresponds to the Excel tools so far developed. And here I would like to hand over to McBen McKenzie, who is also working in the Water Energy for Food Regional Innovation Hub here in Kenya. And he will give you a quick look into how this app actually looked like. McBen, over to you. Thank you, Killian. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, I'll jump straight into it. Until now, the utilization of the tools in the SPS toolbox has basically entailed downloading the Excel tools to your computer, tablet or smartphone, and then working through the individual uh, specific spreadsheets. So this has worked pretty well so far. But as you can imagine, um, this comes with its fair share of obvious inconveniences. Um, you can picture yourself trying to use the tools in the field with your laptop. Um, it may not be that optimal. So the people talked and uh, we listened. And now the SPS toolbox will soon be available for download to your Android device uh, free of charge. Uh, and this will be from the Google Play Store. Next slide and start the videos. So these two videos uh, are basically um, a screen recording of, of, of what we are trying to come up with. Uh, call it a sneak peek into what is coming. So the first version um, will include five of the most popular tools. And this is the, the pump sizing tool, the invest payback tool, uh, the farm analysis tool, the market assessment tool, and finally the water requirement tool. Um, and the app has been optimized to allow easy direct entry of raw information with, uh, you know, preloaded drop downs where applicable, for example, in the pump sizing tool, we find that most of the standard conventional um, items and parameters, for example, pipe sizes are already pretty much presented in uh, drop downs. Um, you'll find that also we have direct linkage to web resources where one can obtain site specific information, e.g. radiation. Um, it also has data storage capability to allow to revert to previous calculations and assessments, just to mention a few features. So the graphical outputs are also pretty cool. And um, for example, for the payback tool, you'll get all your charts uh, and all the graphs presented um, you know, to your mobile phone. Um, we also have data quality features, which ensure that um, the user is able to prefill um, data in the right form. So we're talking about, for example, the right units um, for situations where a particular parameter is required um, and he, misses, or he or she misses out on this, the app will also let you know that you know, um, there's some missing information. So as you can imagine, this is a real upgrade that you're sure all the users will enjoy. And um, we are excited to inform you that you will be able to access this in the next few days, actually before Christmas. And we shall be looking forward to getting some feedback from you on how to further improve on it. Back to you, Kilian. Thank you. Thank you, McVen, and for giving us a quick introduction into the SPS toolbox application. Then moving to our next speaker, Dirk Hangstein from Margraf, who will tell us a bit about the SPIS e-learning course that has been developed and already now for yeah for a long time already is online. And yeah, happy to hear what what you can tell us, Dirk. Over yeah. to you. Thanks, Kilian, and uh, greetings to all of you. My name is Dirk Hangstein. I work with Markov Publishers. Uh, we've heard a lot. Dirk, I uh, think we can't hear you. So my microphone is on. Sorry, sorry, we can hear you. Only me, I can't hear you. Uh, Jana says uh, that the, uh, she can hear me. You can hear me? So can I. Yes, 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 now it works. Okay, now it works. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, it was just a 
weak attempt to uh, confuse me, Kilian. <laughs> but uh, no chance. So once again, greetings to you. My name is Dirk Hanstein. I work with SmartGov Publishers. Um, in the last uh, hour, we have heard a lot about uh, all the huge activities uh, which have been taken, so on. And uh, I didn't even, I, I was not aware about how many people and how many activities are going on, especially uh, the the app of which we heard from McBen. It's, it sounds very exciting to me. Well, I just want to talk about a little, very little um, component, component of all these activities, the e-learning course. It's just a brick in the wall uh, and um, intended to disseminate knowledge. Next slide. So we are talking about the e-learning course. Next slide. Yeah, and um, this e-learning has been, um, as has been mentioned uh, earlier, uh, developed together with Ostfalia University of Applied Sciences on behalf of GIZ. From the very beginning, um, we uh, put a lot of emphasis to the uh, approach of blended learning. Blended learning means that several instruments are mixed together to ensure a best possible learning um, experience. One of the first, the most important component of blended learning is for sure the content itself. Um, the content has been divided into four modules, uh, sustainable water management, solar pumping essentials, planning and operation. And this uh, has been split in 15 lessons from modules and um, if a participant reads everything, uh, we estimate uh, that he or she needs 30 hours of reading time. The content is available on uh, online or offline. For for instance, when you sit in the bus or waiting for, for a train or a plane or something like this, you can also read this. Next slide. Well, the... Um, Content uh, should be in the, the digesting of the content should be tested. First, uh, we need uh, first we, we uh, offer a uh, self test. Every module uh, finishes with a self test, it's not um, supervised by a tutor, only for the participants. Next slide. The next possibility is the, the very, very well done practical example, the CCC, the County Craze Card, in this case from Kenya. We use it, we explained it in the e-learning course a bit more and just used the questions raised in the Country Case Card um, to explain a bit more the Country Case Card and what uh, the actual tools. Next slide. And finally, the final test final test, uh, which is available only for a few days, uh, multiple choice tests and free text assignments, uh, also the possibility to upload an Excel sheet or a Word document to um, evaluate the participants' performance very thoroughly. Next slide. So one component has been the content. The next component are the uh, audiovisual uh, video clips. 15 video clips have been developed. Hands-on videos explains um, centrifugal pumps, uh, horizontal pumps, uh, and so on, helix pumps and everything. But the most important screenshots, I think in my personal opinion, are the screencasts. Uh, five screencasts uh, explain in form of a video the use and the filling in of data to Excel tools, to the Excel tools, five most important Excel tools. Um, over this, we have a discussion forum and in regular uh, periods, uh, we have live webinars, live classes with input lectures and discussions. Next slide. So I think we, we skip this because um, in regard to time, 
would just be in a little example of the farm analysis tool, uh, just showing how to fill in, but uh, you can do this alone. You can find it everywhere. I will would rather mention the, uh, where the content is coming from. Well, uh, it has been mentioned, especially Kerstin was talking about this uh, and, and Robert um, about the uh, manual which is published to Energypedia, which is very, very good and very extensive. <laughs> And in my personal view, it's been it's a bit too long and too complicated, especially for practitioners. So we decided to break the content a bit down. I think 40% are left over. Uh, and uh, we uh, put this into the e-learning course. As said before, the mother language is English. Afterwards has, has been translated the e-learning course to French and currently we are busy um, to uh, produce an Arabic speaking language of it. Next slide. So two ways to deliver the course. One is the tutor guided course twice a year. I think twice a year currently. Uh, like a training course to a fixed date for 60 to 100 invited participants who have to register first four weeks long depending on the number of uh, participants three or four or two tutors and as i said uh, in regular per uh, periods uh, there are live webinars with external experts who are doing live in webinars live classes next slide and uh, GIZ, as well as we do, uh, found it a pity that uh, these courses should be available only twice a year. What is uh, in between the course delivery? Well, GIZ decided to uh, implement a self-learning, which is a good idea. So for the time between the courses, um, the course content and the videos are open to everybody. Um, GIZ only wants to know who will be there in the in this uh, course. So a short registration with your name, your profession, your nationality, your gender and your email address for sure is needed. And then you get a login. Currently, we have not six, uh, 650, but 850 in the meanwhile, 850 users. So you see there's a lot of demand on this. Next slide. So, and um, last but not least, where can you get information without uh, having the need to log in? You can watch uh, two videos. One is a video of the organizers, participants, tutors, uh, report, just a re short report from a course held in July 2015. And a video, the video is called, do I really need this course? A video of around 14 minutes, just showing uh, what is in the course room and how the course is constructed so that everybody can decide whether the course fits his needs or not. Next slide. Yes, and uh, besides the e-learning course, what we are currently doing, Hilda mentioned it before, we are doing uh, a sort of um, translation of the face-to-face -face webinar courses into remote courses. Um, Hilda was quite optimistic about that uh, SPIS uh, online training is very good possible. Yes, but it's not so easy sometimes. Um, face to face uh, training is better than remote training. You all know this. But um, we have to live with Corona and the virus uh, things and um, so we are currently in the process of um, 
developing these remote webinars in French and English. Next slide, I guess. I guess that, that's it. So thanks, Kilian. Thanks, Jana. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Back to you, Kilian. Thank you. Thank you, Dirk, giving us your insights to the e learning course on solid powered irrigation systems. We now have one last item on our list before moving there. Afterwards, we will do a short Q&A session, so you could already start typing your questions into the chat if you have any. And then afterwards, we can we can directly jump to them. Next slide, please. And then you could start the video. This solar irrigation equipment uses the natural lighting. The benefits are after installation, you do not need anything else to do with it. You just rely on the sun. Your crops will be having water any time of the day, any time of the year, as you wish. Peter, maybe I can ask you, how did you go about acquiring your system? I was introduced to this company called The Sun Culture. They have that kind of arrangement where you put down a deposit and they supply you with the equipment. You pay a deposit of, let's say, for example, 10 or 20 percent. The balance of the amount is amortized for a period of one year and the farmer is able to pay as they produce the crops they are growing in the farms. So Joseph, yes, sir. how are you feeling? I'm feeling so much excited that I have no word to express because of these uh, irrigation beings here. It is very nice. So Joseph, what were you using before? I had been using those watering can and it was very tiresome. Mm -hmm. So I had to employ some so many cash laborers to help me a lot mm -hmm. of money, a and, lot of money. And before using the watering cans, what were you using before? Petrol pump, mm -hmm. but it broke down. How much was the petrol? Was it a lot? Oh, it was a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. It was a lot of money. And now how much are you going to spend? <laughs> I don't know how what to say because I'm very, very much excited because I know I shall be using almost nothing. Yes. Because on the sun panel and the water will flow. I'll charge you for the sun. <laughs> it's only God. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I'm very, I'm very grateful. Yeah. Thank you, Jana, for showing this uh, video. Unfortunately, it was a bit laggy, probably due to the connection, but I guess the sound in any case was, was the highlight here. Um, just as a bit a little background, so as already mentioned, the focus of our current work was rather on advisor level, and then we thought about what could we do to also address SPS and promoting SPS to farmers itself, and we came up then with this collaboration with Media E or Shamba Shape Up, and they are producing currently for us some tutorial videos on solar powered irrigation systems and also the Shamba Shape Up, which is a TV program. And here the presentation ends and we would move to the question and answers. Robert and other moderators have already been eagerly responding to the questions put in the chat. So I think for now they are all answered. If you still have any, I kindly invite you to put them into the chat now that we still have the opportunity to answer to them. And yeah, I guess I would just wait a minute now for anyone to, to put his questions in the chat box right side of the screen. So far, there are no questions. If any one of the speakers wants maybe one of the questions that was put in the chat, again, respond a bit more in detail. You're mostly welcome to do so. Or also, if you yourself have questions to, to put, you're also mostly welcome to do this.
Kilian, if I may. Yes, I hear you, Robert. Thank you, great. I, I just want to respond to one question that was, uh, or it was actually a series of questions about um, <clears throat> amortizations, etc. How does it compare against diesel? Um, and I just want to confirm that this is exactly what the toolbox was designed for. There are, there are no single answers. I mean, if I, for instance, want a solar pump um, to provide water to 100 sheep, then you'll probably look at an amortization under uh, that is less than a year. If you want a solar pump for cut flowers uh, kept in a, in a greenhouse for the European market, you're probably looking at maybe something like three years. If you want to produce really something where the competition is tight, let's take, uh, let's take soya beans on, uh, on 20 hectares, then you most probably look at an amortization of maybe up to 10 years. So just wanted to confirm there are, it is very much uh, dependent on what you want to use it for. And I think that is one of the key features of the toolbox is it, it prompts the user to consider what it is that is uh, what it is that I actually want to do with the uh, with the system. What is it? What is the value addition I seek to achieve? Thank you. Thank you, Robert, for your clarification and further explanation. Then I don't see any more questions in the chat. I will put here in the chat an contact address sbis at giz.de. You could always contact us under this address in case of further questions or if you want to get in touch with us. Then it's up for me to close this session. Thank you all very much for joining us today and to, to participate in this session about the lessons learned on SBIS. A special thanks also to all speakers who joined this event. And, and yeah, it was, was, as already mentioned, like a little family reunion with lots of old and great colleagues. And it was super nice to hear from all of you. I wish you all the best and a great rest of the day and yeah all the best from Kenya bye bye